Since365.com. Gonna redo another classic today. We're gonna redo Crazy Train. Now, the original, uh, well, the first time I did this track, um, I really based it off the live album version. So, the tribute album. I love the tribute album. And he, he would add a bunch of little things into the song and stuff. Uh, for this redo, just kind of trying to improve the quality of the, uh, the video and the lesson and and it's it all in a, you know, one video. I'm gonna focus more on the original recorded version, the studio version. Um, so this is the one that most people are, are familiar with, not the, not the live tribute version. So we're gonna stick with the studio recording here. Now, before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell so you know when it's a new video. Uh, you know, like and commenting on the lessons really helps the algorithm. Watching all my new lessons really helps the most. Um, and if you really want to support uh, what I do here on YouTube as well, the link in the description uh, is the best way. It's a link to my Guitar Academy. Uh, my Guitar Academy contains all my courses, from com uh, complete courses for beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, and guitar tone. I go live there every weekend with just Academy members so they can get their questions answered in real time. So it's a really fun community. So hopefully you'll come join us. You get a free seven day trial by clicking that link. All right, so let's jump into the track. I'm tuned uh, to standard tuning here. Um, and we have this intro section, which goes into the one of the most classic rock and roll riffs ever written. So let's just start with a pick slide. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't go that long, but anyway, I just destroyed my pick. Um, so anyway, you just do that, <laughs> and then end of the kind of slide down, and we have this main riff. So. This riff is, you'll see, played a little bit differently depending on who's playing it. Like Zach Wah, he plays it a little bit different. Fingering, same notes. Uh, Randy played it like this. One of the very, very few live videos we actually have of him is playing Crazy Train on a, talk, on a TV show, and that's how he's playing. All right, so what's going on here? So we're gonna start here, with the second fret on the low E string. Hit that twice. And then up to the fourth fret there on the A string. Then back down to that note on the low E string at the second fret, just hit it once this time though. And then I'm gonna kinda detail this one in. Uh, I know it's a very advanced song if you learn the whole thing. There's a lot of people just coming here for this riff, so we're gonna kind of single note it here and just help them through it if they're, if they're um, not everybody uh, has a lot of experience yet. So we have back to that low E string, that, uh, the second fret. Then you go back to the A string, but instead of the fourth fret, it's the fifth fret. And then back to that note on the low E string, just hit it once. So we have this so far. You're gonna start by hitting this note twice. Then you go back to the fourth fret there on the A string. So you play that, and then you're playing the, going back to that note on the low E string of the second fret. So we have this so far. All right, then we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna come over here to the second fret on the A string. You're gonna pick that. And then you're gonna come down to five, four, five on the low E string. And then 
back to the second fret there on the A, and then go five, four, zero on the low E. So. So all together. And then just repeat from there. So the fourth time through, instead of doing this, that ending, we stop right here and go, jump over to a D power chord. So that's just gonna be uh, the open D string, second fret on the G, and third fret there on the B. And then we go to this big E power chord. Now that's gonna be open E string, Second fret there on the A and the D. So you just bar that. And then you play the fourth fret there on the G. And then the open B and high E string. So. So that whole main riff, um, you know, obviously it's instant classic. Uh, there's a lot of people who just want to learn that, so, so I went through it pretty slow for anybody that was kind of really new to the guitar. Uh, for the rest of the lesson, though, uh, things get much more difficult, and uh, we're going to be uh, maybe not going so note for note slow, because it's probably more advanced players that are following along from this point on. All right, so then we have the verse section. <laughs> Well, not quite the verse yet, but it's the verse riff, and we have that little fill that happens. So we're still in the intro, but we go into... So we're gonna start with this little... This little dun dun dun. So it's an eighth into a sixteenth. And then we're gonna hit just like an A, or an A, a major chord, or sometimes just an A power chord. That bar at the second fret. And then we do straight 16th, just on the, um, the A string, so that kind of palm muted A. And you're gonna jump up here. So this is an E major chord, um, and some of the times when you see him through, you don't hear the top string too loud. But sometimes he really, when he's really kind of accenting the chord, uh, so a lot of times when you see you play the the verse, he's always kind of playing the full chord. He just not might be accent. He's accenting the strings a little bit different. So the first time through might be just kind of you don't hear the high E string that much. And then the second time through, he's he's kind of really accenting the chord more, which makes him bring that top note out more. So anyway. So this, it's a E major chord. We're gonna have, uh, it's gonna have a first inversion. And we have the sixth fret there on the D, fourth on the G, fifth on the B, and seventh on the high E. And then you're gonna take that down two frets to make it a D major chord. So we have, uh, you just kinda, Keeping the straight 16th, 4 16th notes between each one. So we have this. And then back to the A chord. And there's a. At the very end, he puts a little tail on it, which is just the palm, palm muted fourth fret on the low E. Back to the open A string. So all together, we have this. So, uh, so the second time through the riff, we put this little fill on it. So that's pretty uh, simple to understand. Um, we basically just play the fourth fret there on the G, pull off to two, and then pull off to the open string. So we do that on the G and the D and the A. All right, 
So then we get to the actual verse here. So the verse is pretty much that riff over and over without, without the little, uh, without the little fill. Um, the, and all the verses are pretty similar like this, but there's an ending at right at the end of the verse, right before it goes to the pre-chorus. There's this uh, tricky little riff that he does, and he doesn't really necessarily play it the same way um, each time. It's a little bit different each time, uh, at least the first half of the lick. So let me play through the verse, and uh, I'll show you that little ending um, section here. So we have this. <laughs> So it's that same riff, uh, and then we have this little ending section. Now, you'll see this played a million different ways, and you'll see him play it a million different ways. Um, on the live versions, there's always kind of little different things in here. Um, there's varying opinions on how this little thing's played, because it's really heavily palm muted, um, and things kind of move around pretty quick. Um, but I think we got it pretty close here, because there's a very obvious slide, a uh, descending slide here. Um, and we have a heavily palm muted open E and open A string to start it. This, at least this first time you're playing it. And then we have, an, we know we have an A major triad. Then it slides down quite a bit to this E major triad. So we can go, but it's really, not the right voicing of the chord, and it's also not a long enough slide. And it doesn't slide because it's a different shape, so it doesn't slide to it very cleanly. But I feel like he's jumping up here. And then the first time at least through it, he doesn't do any kind of additional movement in the bass there. He just, he just hit that open E a couple times with. So. So that's sliding that A chord, so that's 11th fret on the D, 9th on the G, 10th on the B. So I'm hitting the open A, open, uh, open E, then open A. And then I come, can it open E a couple times you know, as I slide down to this G. Now this next part, we're playing, is a really heavy part. And it's, you hear mostly 2-4 on the low E string, but it does sound like a little bit of 2-4 on the A, so I think maybe it's almost like a fourth there the, on the, across the low E and the A string. Just at the second fret, then the fourth fret. Then you hit that D power chord. So that's heavily palm muted right here. And then, then we have 2-4 not palm muted into the A power chord, so we have this. So after that first verse, we have the pre-chorus, uh, which looks like this. Into the chorus. So we have this, just the, the power chord, F sharp power chord. To the open E string. Back to the power chord. And then hit the power chord again. And the open E again. Come up here and grab this D power chord at the fifth fret of the A string. And then you're gonna hit a couple harmonics. This right here at the seventh fret on the D and then the seventh fret on the G. So with this. Now from there, uh, we're gonna go, the rhythm changes a little bit. We have this. So it starts the same. Then we have this. It's a quick little 16th, a couple 16th in it. So it's an open E, quick little pull off, two to zero. That, does, that We're gonna do this in the first and second pre-chorus. Third pre-chorus, it doesn't do this little rhythm shift. So we have this. So after that, 
you're going to grab the D power chord, just the open D power chord this time. And then, and then that's just the fifth fret there on the A string twice. Then four, two, and that takes us to the chorus. So all together for the pre-chorus. All right, so now the choruses, uh, the chorus is hard to say, um, chorus sections, let's say that, um, they each have their own fill. So we kind of start the chorus and there's a long guitar fill at the beginning of it and then we kind of continue with the, um, the chorus. So this first chorus, along with its fill, looks like this. All right, and that takes us back to the verse. So um, now we're going to start with this open A power chord, then 4 2 in the low E string to the E power chord. And then we go into that first fill. So it's kind of a little fancy blues lick. So we're going to start with a bend at the 4th fret on the G into a double stop across the B um, and the high E at the 2nd fret. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pull off 5 to 2 on the B, then 3 to 2 on the B, over to 5 on the G, back to 2 on the B. Time. Then you're going to uh, pull off 5 to 4 to 2 on the G. And then over to 4 on the D string. So then go back to the second fret there on the G. Second on the G, pull off four to two on the D, over to four on the A, and then back to the two on the D, and then you kind of just come down here and play four, three, four, a couple times, and then pull off down to, and just kind of do a trill between three and two. Eventually pull off to the open A string. All right, so that, coming out of that lit, I do A power chord, then four two zero. And when you get to zero, it's an E power chord, and then two four on the low E, and then over to the kind of the. So that's kind of be that that F sharp power chord. Open E and back to the power chord. And then he has these harmonics that are not completely consistent each time. Kind of the first time you hear it, it's not like he's doing the second fret there on the A string. And then the second fret of the low E. So with a and then go 2-4 on the low E again. Back to the A. And then come back down 4-2. To the E. And then back to that 2-4. And then we're back to the same thing again. But this time, and, and most of the times when he plays this, it sounds like he's just hanging out on this, the, uh, the low E string, just the second fret. And then play the power chord again to the open E. And then up to the D power chord to the fifth fret of the A. And then the E power chord. And there's a quick little ending. Takes us back to the verse. Or it takes us back to the verse riff. Zero, two, four on the low E. So all together for this chorus. All right, 
Now we get back to uh, this verse riff with uh, just like we did in the intro. <laughs> that same little legato lick. And then we're to the verse. Now this verse has got one little, besides that little ending riff that we'll talk about that's, that's different, um, it's got one little chord that's different in it as well. Uh, the fourth time through the, the, the riff, instead of ending it with just the, like an A power chord, he ends it with this big A power chord. So he just basically bars the fifth fret across the B in the high E. So you're gonna hear that chord in the second verse. So um, this is the fourth time through. So it's kind of like this. Right there. And then back to the normal verse. And then we have this ending to the second verse. So I believe he's back up here at this A major. So it's gonna now do a little bit different bass line though. So we have open E and then the ninth fret there on the, on the low E string, which I think he's playing with his thumb. So he does like this. And then you have this A major chord here, the same one we did earlier. And you're gonna slide that down again. And then we're basically gonna do the same move right here. So we're hitting the open E and then the G sharp there at the fourth fret on the low E. And then, and then the ending of it, the same. So the ending of all, all three of these verse endings are the same, except this is that part. Now that's my favorite version of what he's doing. It's really cool. Really, can you really hear the bass line moving? Around? All right. So then we're back um, uh, to the pre chorus, same as the first pre chorus. And then we're to the second chorus. Now the second chorus is uh, the same except the fill. Instead of, the, instead of that fill, we have a different fill. So let me play uh, through that for you real quick. To the bridge. So uh, that so it's the same as the first chorus, except we're just gonna replace the fill here. Now this fill right here is doubled. Uh, so he double tracked or even sometimes triple tracked his even his fills, not just the solos. Um, so this is obviously uh, double tracked, and as he climbs up the riff, um, the two tracks won't be completely in sync, so it kind of creates this really chaotic um, sound as you get up top. So you gotta really focus on just one of the lines, uh, if you can, um, to, to bring out exactly what he's doing. But it is a repetitive lick, lick except for the very beginning, uh, the fingering's a little bit different. So it starts out with this seventh fret there on the B string. And you're gonna pull off. So it starts out with just a regular minor um, arpeggio. So we had this. Um, Seventh fret there on the on the uh, B string, and you're gonna pull off. So the actual pattern here now. After, this, this is just a kind of a starting note. It's not part of the pattern. Then the actual pattern now is gonna be nine pull off to five over to seven on the B, and then take that exact same thing up one fret. And now things are gonna change a little bit. He's gonna move, so we just did it right there. We did that 10 pull off to six over to eight on the B. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the actual shape by moving the index finger up one fret. So now we're gonna leave the other two fingers there for now. So we, now we have that shape, so we have this. 
And now we're gonna take that up chromatically. It's a little three note lick. And until he kind of gets up to the 18th fret, he just pull off from 15 and to 15 and then go. So we have this. Now what he does to make this riff easier to play, but also kind of has a, a big difference in the sound, is when he gets into this riff, he leaves these two fingers here. He doesn't try to get too much separate. So that, leaving them down as you go up, kind of cre helps create that kind of, the, the notes are bleeding together a little bit, and it um, helps kind of create that chaotic sound he's going for. So that's the fill that's in the second chorus. That's the only thing that's different with the second chorus. And then we get to the bridge, which is pretty simple. So that's just kind of a, uh, just kind of F sharp power chord. That's the second fret there, and then over to A power chord. And sometimes when he comes back down to the E power chord, he hits either the fourth fret twice, or he'll go four zero. So it's just kind of he just kind of mixes it up when he goes. You can do it like that, or go, and then. So after we get down to the E power chord, he comes back and goes uh, four zero on the low E. So we have this. Back to the F sharp power chord, and then we're up to the D, E, and then he comes, keeps going up and two frets higher, and grabs the, the octave of this power chord, the F sharp up here at the ninth fret. And then, Pretty much the same thing repeated, pretty simple stuff. Um, then we get to the solo. So, so now there is a rhythm guitar part underneath this solo. So I'm gonna cover that first, very simple rhythm part. And this would be good for the, the people out there who just can't do this solo yet. You saw something to play along to. You should play the rhythm guitar part, which is kind of a fun riff too. So that sounds like this. So we're gonna start here at the uh, that F sharp power chord up in the ninth fret off the the A string. Play that, and then go down to seven, five, and then four, two. Sorry, this. Then the A power chord, and then play four zero on the low E string. And then to that F sharp power chord here at the second fret of the low E. So all together. Now repeat that. So you repeat it four times, except for the very last time, instead of going. And it just goes like this. That 4-0, then just resolve it to an E power chord instead of the F sharp. So it's the same riff done four times. That lat instead of coming back to that chord at the end of the fourth time, resolve it to an E power chord, and that's all it is. All right, so let's crack into the fun stuff. I'm going to play through uh, Randy's killer guitar solo here, one of the greatest guitar solos of all time. I'm going to play through it for you real quick, and I'll show you how to play it note for note.
All right, you cannot get better than that. So we're gonna start here with a little bit. So it's, he's gonna start, you can, he starts trilling a little bit between seven, seven and 10 on the, on the uh, B string. You hear that starting up a little bit without the tap first, while he's kind of, you know, moving his pick over, I guess. And then we start this. So the pattern here, when he starts tapping, we still have uh, 10 and seven on the, um, in the left hand here on the B string. We're gonna tap the 14th fret, pull off to the 10th fret there, the pinky, and then tap again. So we have this. Then pull off to the 10 again. So it's kind of like a double tap. And then we're gonna, we're gonna pull off to the 7th fret and then hammer back on to 10. So here this. So once he gets going, that's the tapping pattern that he's repeating. And then he's gonna just move this note up here, uh, the, the tap note to 15. And just keep everything the same in the left hand. So Now here, he goes into a trill between nine and 12 on the B. And he's playing this on a Les Paul. That's why I'm using a Les Paul, even though I'm, uh, I don't play Les Pauls very often, so they're kind of awkward to me. And then he does that kind of like thing where he decreases the pitch. Or... This is my buddy's guitar, so I don't want to break it in half. But um, so he's, he's doing something like that. He's taking the, the, the neck and, and bending it. So if you have a Les Paul, you use Les Pauls, you know how to do that a lot better than me. But that's what's going on. He's, he's playing, he's doing a trill there, and then he's doing the, he's kind of bending the, the note, kind of lowering the pitch and bringing it back up by just kind of bending the neck a little bit. And then, and then it co quickly comes back. It comes back as a quick little like grace note at the seventh fret on the G string. And he, he quickly hammers on nine. And you're gonna bend up that nine a whole step. And then, Play 10 on the B string into a, another bend of the ninth fret on the G. All right, from there we have this next phrase. All right, so that's gonna be at the 17th fret on the high E string, so 17, 16, 14. Kind of rake into that six, 17. So 17, 16, 14 on the, on the high E string, then a bend to the 17th fret on the B string. And then come back up, 14, 16, 17, and to another whole set bend. This time on the high E string. All right, then we have this little descending lick. All right, so now that lick is gonna be uh, starting at the 14th fret on the high E string. Hammer on 17, pull back off to 14. Over to 17 on the B. Back to the 14 on the high E string. And then you're gonna play 17 on the B string, pull off to 15 and 14. And then you're gonna go back to 15 on the B, pull off to 14. Then 16 on the G, pull off to 14. And then you're gonna do a bend at the 16th fret there on the G. Then play 17 on the B. And then, so you kinda have that bend. And then when you do the 17, pick the, the note on the G string and release the bend. down to now the 14th fret there on the G. All right, next phrase. So 
So a uh, little legato lit lines here. Uh, we're gonna start by hammering 14 to 16 on the G, and then hammering 14 to 17 on the B. And then we're getting to a series of trills. He uses his, uh, you can use your pinky, or he's using his uh, ring finger and, and index finger for the trills, mostly. So we have 15 to 17 first. And then he starts kind of climbing up, and just really quickly he does the same trill, but between 16 and 19. And then he makes it all the way up here to 17th fret on the high E and 21. So that little, so that's a little, kind of a little passing trill between 16 and 19, as he's getting from here to here. So you just do the trill a couple times at 16 and 19, and you come up to 17 and 21. So we have, Now he transitions back down to the 16 and 19, but before he does it, he has a couple of trills between 17 and 19. And he resolves it to that 16 and 19. So we have. And then, then a couple trills between 14 and 15 on the high E string into a whole step bend to the 17th fret there on the B, then 17 on the high E, and then back into that same bend again. And then we have this next uh, phrase. So that's gonna be 15, 14 on the B string, over to 16 on the G. And then, a little repetitive lick, that's 14 on the G, and then a quick hammer, I mean, pull hammer from 16, pull off to 14 on the D, and then back to 16. It's kind of a four note lick that he repeats. So with this. And then we work our way up to, that's gonna be a trill between 13 and 14 on the G. And then 16 on the G. And then we have the final lick, which looks like this. All right, so this is another thing that you're gonna see him play differently every single time he plays it. The, the Sherby version is a little different lick. Um, the version that he's, you, we actually have video of is a little different look than what's on the recording. So he does something similar to this, um, but it's not exactly note for note. So we're trying to cover note for note what's on the actual recording. Um, and it's a double too, so, and things don't completely uh, like match up all the way through. It's very, very close. I mean, he's just, it's amazing that he can do that at all, especially with licks like this. So uh, now what he's doing, this is why I think, because there's a little bit of a slide in there at the very end, so it kind of changes the, the way you have to kind of finger it. So right here, we're gonna start here with, uh, at the 11th fret, and you're gonna slide into this 12th fret real quick. And then hammer 14, 16. Um, the way to really pick up with stuff, by the way, um, there's an isolated, there's isolated guitar tracks on YouTube you can listen to this song. Take it and slow it way down. And you can hear these notes, how they come across. Other than that, it just sounds like a blurred note. So we have, you're gonna slide into 12, and then hammer 14, 16. Then you're gonna come over to the A string and play 12, hammer 14, 16 again. So hear this. And then he's gonna come back here to the 11th fret of the D string. You're gonna hammer on uh, 12 and 14. Then come up here to the 13th fret and play 13, hammer 14, 16. So it's kind of the same shape. And then the same thing over on the G string, 13, hammer six, 14, hammer 16. Now here's where the timing uh, changes a little bit. And the timing changes. He kind of really glides up into that note. And the reason why he's doing that, because these top, 
the, the, the way it's played on these top two strings is completely different. I mean, you can sit there and do this. And which, which is kind of awkward, but he doesn't really do it that way because you can tell he's, how he leads into that note. And there's kind of a typical lick at the end uh, that he's used in a, quite a few solos. And it, um, he just kind of ends it with that one as well. So we, we have this. So when we get to that 16th fret down on the G, it really kind of leads in this note. And then here we have. So this gets a lot easier when you get to this string. You play 14, hammer on 17, then uh, 14 on the high E string, then go back to that 17 on the B, and this is where that slide happens. There's a slide from 17 to 19 in that solo. And then over 17 on the high E string, and the bend of the whole side bend of the 19, and a release. done with that. So then it gets back to um, the kind of the, the main riff like, like we played in the intro. And to that same. So the same thing and then it takes us to the third verse. And this third verse, really the main thing you want to kind of talk about here, you can do it whatever in, you want. Whatever you want to do there. Um, but the main thing that happens in the third verse is, is a couple of little bends on the low E string that aren't in the other ones. So it looks like this. These bends happen on the second and fourth time of playing the riff. So. <laughs> So it's just right there. So all I'm doing there in that riff, so the second and and, and uh, fourth time through the riff, instead of going, instead of doing that, I'm just coming down to the third fret instead of the fourth. And there's a slight bend, slight bend on it. It's trying to create a more dissonant sound. Just like. So it's just got a little slight bend on it, some vibrato. And that's really the only difference there for, for that verse. And then we're to um, the pre-chorus. And now this last pre-chorus is different than the other ones. It has different harmonics, and it has a different um, uh, rhythm. It's kind of more of a straight ahead rhythm. So it looks like this. <laughs> So that's the same thing right there. We're just going. So when we get to this D power chord here, though, instead of just those two harmonics that we did earlier in the other pre chorus, this one is. So that's going to be the seventh fret harmonic on the B, and then the fifth fret harmonic across the G, B, and the high E. So. And then back to the, here's where it's different. So before we were going, there was that little, now it's just, just straight, just like we did before. Like when we went to that chord, it's the same. So it's a little bit easier. And then the same little, little ending there. And then we have the last chorus. And then we have just, it's the same as the previous two courses, except once again, the fill is a little bit different. So the fill that we, we're gonna hear looks like this. Until you kind of really run out of space there. So it's kind of in context. It's, section. So this little lick right here. So 
So we're just kind of doing a start with kind of a slow bend of the 16th fret there on the G, and then you're gonna play 14 on the high on the B string. Sorry, hammer 17, pull off to 14. So that's the lick, and he kind of just does that chromatically. Kind of until he runs out of room. And then back to the rest of the chorus is the same there. All right, so then we get to the outro section, which is just kind of similar to the bridge, really, right before the solo. Just. Sometimes I'll go up here. This just fades out pretty quickly. You do, you do hear him kind of do the full four, two. Kind of like in the chorus. But like I said, it fades out very, very quickly there. So uh, there's not a lot to talk about for the outro section. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very in-depth breakdown, note for note breakdown of Randy Rhodes' just brilliant work on Crazy Train, the biggest Ozzy song of all time, his biggest song, one of the biggest guitarists, of all, greatest guitarists of all time, one of the greatest solos of all time, one of the greatest players of all time. So it's really one that if I'm gonna be redoing something, I need to redo this one. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.